Jerry is the keynote speaker this year. He is the founder of Storm Co, which was established in 1992. Storm Co has since spread to provide a model of adventure in service to all states in Australia, New Zealand, North America, the Pacific Islands and Europe. Jerry has continued to pursue doctoral research and develop service-based leadership programs. Please welcome Jerry Anza. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't look up and watch that video. So you heard the date 1992. For those who don't know what Stormco is, it's it was a a way of immersing then high school students in an outback or rural community and being a part of that community and the idea was that was our our ministry. We went uh, in 1992, we started a trip to Moree, New South Wales. Then the next year, we uh, came. We had come back from that trip so excited about what had happened in our community and what had happened within the team that we decided that we needed to, to take this the next step. Our, our youth department got involved and... We got a couple teams the next year to go out, and things kept growing from there. And um, Brenda Carney is here and reminded me that she was on that first Stormco trip. Because in 1992, we didn't name it Stormco. That, that came in 1993, and Brenda was on that trip. And her memory is so much better than mine. She was telling me what happened, and it was scary. So... Fast forward from 1992 to 2011 for a pivotal moment, um, storm call moment for me. So I have a team of students. We are in Gunduindi out west, and uh, it was an early trip to that community. Um, my school, the team came from my school. We call them connect trips and storm code trips side by side uh, for some other reasons. I can tell you about that tomorrow afternoon if you want. But we were in community and we had, it was Sunday. And on storm code trips, we knew that on Sunday we went to church. So we went to a church on Sunday morning in Gundawindi. And I'm going, what are we going to do this afternoon? Somebody in the church in Gundawindi said, well, down in Yalarban, there's a church that meets occasionally. I think they're having a church service this afternoon, like 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. And, and I got a phone number and called up Yalarbin. Did I know where Yalarbin was? Do you know where Yalarbin was, is? Anybody been to Yalarbin? If you, you, you actually probably have. <laughs> you just didn't know because you went through and there was nothing there. So... But it's a cool place, and I've got so many good Yalarban stories because after this story, we, we have gone back there uh, many times for, for one thing or another. We're in, we, we go to the, to the little church, which is about as big as this stage, in Yalarban, and, um, and we get a phone number for me to organize what we're going to do there. So you got to understand that Stormco is all about service, and we needed to go and be useful in communities. We wanted to go and help the communities that we were visiting. It was an important concept for us. Adventure and service was the, uh, was the motto. So it was all about service, and going to church was good because, you know, we're good Christians. So I wanted to go to church, but what was the key thing we have to do? Serve, right? And so I'm on the phone, I'm going, we would love to come to your little church service, and um, is there anything we can do to kind of help in your community? And it was, a, it was a lady on the phone, and she goes, mm, well, not sure. I said, there's got to be something we can do in your community, like something we can get involved in. Well, you know, Yalarban's not a very big place. I'm going, come on, 
there's something. I said, what have you, what have you got? Do you, is there a playground? Oh, yes, we've got a playground. Next to the community hall, there's a playground. I'm going, bingo, we are in. What do playgrounds need? Paint, cleaning, graffiti. There's got to be something messy in a playground. We have a job to do. We're on it. We will be in Yalarban Sunday afternoon. So we go to Yalarban Sunday afternoon. We're sitting in church. Um, actually, it was bigger than this stage. It was probably that stage and this stage combined. And, and there was a few people there besides our team of about 15 kids or 20 kids, however many we had that year. And it was warm, like it was hot. And the, ser the church service was boring. And I remember I just could not stay awake. And the kids were fading. And then I'm just going, let's get out of here so we can get to that playground because we got work to do because we're in Yalarban, right? We are here because we are Stormco and we serve. And so the church service finishes and I'm going, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting us. Which way to the playground? It's across the road over there. Thank you, thank you. And then one lady says, oh, you can't go yet. We have afternoon tea after church. I'm going, that's lovely. Thank you. Afternoon tea. So we go behind. So there's a little church, classic little church, and the classic little mini church hall. Behind the little church, we walk into the church hall, and there is like three tables loaded with cakes and cookies and stuff and I'm going oh great I'm never going to get these boys out of here <laughs> it was loaded the place how those five or six or seven ladies I don't I think there was one guy and maybe these these half a dozen ladies in the church how they provided that much food was like and we had only, like, called that morning or the day before sometime to let us know, let them know we were there. So, anyway, I've got to move through this story. It was, it was such a funny story, though. So, there we are in the hall, and we walk in, and the kids go, Mr. Answer, can we have some of this? Like, you know, are we allowed? Because we're here. What are we here to do? That's right. Are we allowed to eat before we serve? And I'm going, yeah, go, you know, eat, whatever. What time is it? Okay, whatever. You can, let's eat, eat. Oh, thank you for the food, you know, as I'm being nice. Well, the kids start eating, the ladies start chatting, and the noise starts getting louder in the room. Um, and, and then I'm, I'm looking around, and I remember doing something, all of a sudden turning to the other teacher, Rosanna, who's with me, um, Mrs. Hargrave for those Emmanuel kids, um, and it's, it was noisy, like there was cackling and laughing, and I'm going, this is too noisy for church. I'm going, who, which kid am I going to yell at? And I'm trying to look at my grade 12 boys, see who was yelling, and it wasn't my kids cackling. It was the old ladies in the church. They were cackling, and, and they were cackling and laughing and giggling. And then there was girls over in the side room. They were having tea. They were having chats with some of the ladies. And then there was, there was groups of boys grouped around. And people were laughing. And it was noisy and loud and messy. And everyone was eating food. And I'm going, what is going on here? And I start walking around. And we've got these ladies in the community. And they're flirting with my grade 12 boys. I go, ooh, you're a, you're a handsome boy. Are you like, are you in the movies? Like, you look like that boy off Twilight, you know? He's, he is handsome like you. And I'm going, what's going on? And I go back to Rosanna. I go, we got to get out of here. There's a playground over there somewhere, which I hadn't even know where it was. And what is going on in here? This is nuts. These people are, these ladies are like having fun and laughing and carrying on. Our kids are eating all their food. The cake is nearly gone. What are we doing here? And she just turns to me. She goes, Jerry, relax. This is what we are here for. Jerry, 
relax. This is actually what we are here for. And I just, it like those words stunned me because I was on a mission, you know, I knew I had a purpose, I had a, a thing to do. And she's going, we're here for this. And so I just like took a deep breath and we stayed there and we had a beautiful afternoon with the ladies. We eventually found the playground, which was literally as big as this. And um, so we did a couple things and we went back. The point was that Stormco, which has become synonymous with service and painting and cleaning and car washes and clowns and face painting, we did none of that. There was no paint, we left the tools in the car. We did nothing creative. It was useless. It was a useless time of eating somebody else's cake. Where was our service? And you know what? It was the best thing. And it changed my life. Like it actually changed my whole perspective on all this ministry. And I'm ashamed to say it was 20 years coming that we had that. So there's, so I'm, I'm looking at that. I'm going, what does creativity have to do with Stormco? There are three words that I want us to, to look at. One is creativity, the second is innovation, and the third is adventure. Creativity is thinking outside the box. You're here because you're good at that, like you're creative people or you're interested in creative people. I'm just a guy that, that said we need to paint playgrounds, right? And, um, and created, creativity brings the thought. Innovation is when you act on that and you make things happen. We heard some amazing examples of what was what is happening here. And then adventure. Adventure is something different again. Adventure is when you are, you are on a journey and you don't know what's going to happen next. And what is cool about Stormco is that right from the beginning, we knew that it had to be an adventure. We knew that service, we knew that what we had was magic. We knew that what we were doing was changing lives and it had to be an adventure. And the reason it had to be adventure is because when you don't have an adventure, when you leave out the response and the relationship you end up running a program. And what I realized is that for a long time, I had been in program mode. And that's what happens in ministry all the time. We take something that's amazing. We take something that is godly and God-given and spirit-led, and we turn it into a program. We do that at church. We do it everywhere. We do it all over the place. And we were doing it with Stormco and maybe still doing it with Stormco. But we had got to this place where we were doing service to others. And, you know, you've heard that related to Stormco. Service to others really matters. Well, guess what? Service to others is not what we should be doing. That's a program. That's coming and going, oh, here's what we do, you know. We want to we clean your playground because obviously it must be dirty. Like, what message am I sending? Obviously it must be dirty and obviously you don't have paint or don't know how to use paint brushes. But lucky for you, I've got kids from the Gold Coast that know how to paint. Woo! Like, we're going to talk about this tomorrow, and we're going to have some more fun with that concept, but it's a confronting concept. A relationship needs to be an adventure, not a program. Programs are predictable. Relationships are not predictable. And here's something that's interesting. God is not predictable. And when we reduce God to, to something predictable, we have a problem. 
and I love, I love the Narnia series, and C.S. Lewis goes, you know, he's a lion, and he's not a tame lion. Jesus, when he was confronted by Satan in the wilderness, and Satan said, jump off. God said your angel, his angels would catch you, take him at his word, jump off. And Jesus goes, no. No, actually. I don't tell God what to do. I don't determine how God, how God acts. My journey needs to be a journey of faith, not by sight. Have you heard that scripture before? We walk by faith, not by sight. But we want to walk by sight, not by faith, don't we? I do. I want to know what's going to happen. I want to know where God is going to lead me. I want to know what the program is so that I can do it for God, with God. Sorry. And we, we have done the same thing with Storm Co. And what I want to spend my time in this conference, more time tomorrow, is that I'd love for you to think about your ministry and you think, have we tried to reduce God to predictability and have we turned our ministry, which is based on relationship, into a program? And are we then not allowing God to bring a fresh new spirit into our lives? I found this quote which, I, which has been challenging me. For too long, we've called unbelievers to invite Jesus into your life. I want to invite Jesus into my life when it's convenient, of course. And it's interesting, the quote said, Jesus doesn't want to be in my life. My life is a train wreck. Jesus wants me to be in his life. Jesus wants his spirit to lead me. He wants to take me on an exhilarating journey that is an adventure. And he does call me to serve but he wants that service to be an adventure with him, guided by him, and guided by relationships. So I wanna to share tomorrow some more with you about how that crazy afternoon tea, eating cake with the ladies, changed my perspective in the way that we deal with communities. And maybe there's something in the way that you deal in your ministry Maybe there's something in the way that your church deals with, with those in your church and with your relationships outside of your church. Maybe some things we can gain for that. Um, so we look forward to that, and I'm loving the music and the learning that we're having in this conference. Uh, I hope that you're enjoying it as much as I am. Thank you.